I hope you love a banjo today because we are going to play a little game that I invented that I call the Caterpillar. And this is all about developing finesse and touch with your striking hand. We will not even be touching the banjo with our fretting hand today. This is all about developing the engine of claw hammer. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Before we get started, I do wanna let you know this lesson today is tied to a big unit that we're doing on the famous droney tune called Ducks on the Mill Pond over on Patreon. Lots of tab, including tab for today's lesson will be available exclusively for patrons. We have our Discord server set up and we're doing lots of cool stuff. This will result in an e-booklet, some beautiful tab and transcriptions of exercises and variations on Ducks on the Mill Pond. If you want in on that and the upcoming boot camp that's gonna be happening in March, I do hope you join me over there. The link is in the description below. All right, without further ado, we are tuned to double C. And we are going to play a little game. This is all about displacing an accent. So we're going to start with a simple double thumbing pattern. Let me show you what it is. Four down strokes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is a good warm up for the exercise itself. One stroke on every string, working from first to fourth. Get it nice and balanced. All right. All right, now that you have the basic pattern, the strings that we're gonna be hitting in this exercise, I want you to close your eyes and imagine a caterpillar. A caterpillar, when it crawls, undulates. And that's the idea behind this exercise. We are displacing accents so it feels like the rising and falling of a caterpillar gently undulating along. So the first accent we're gonna be doing is on the first string. So the first measure is one, two, three, four. Second measure will accent the second string Third will accent the third string. Fourth measure will be accenting the fourth string and we'll cycle that as a big loop. Nice and slow. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one. Start over. Last time. This is tricky to do. I am going to ramp up the speed on you. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. time. Want to try this faster? I thought you'd say that. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Before we move on to the expert version, let's talk about some hints and tips that will help you. A couple things. First of all, when you loop back from the fourth measure to the first measure, you're really doubling your accent. So you have to hit a hard four and then a hard one in terms of downstrokes. So that last seam where we're going all the way back to the beginning, you're doing two downstroke accents in a row, four, one. So just that took me a little while to kind of burn into the hand, so I was doing that automatically. Make sure you accommodate that as you go. 
So the second tip I'll give you is don't start this exercise too loud. Lower your volume, get this nice and quiet so that your accents pop more and you have more dynamic range between those loud notes and those quiet notes. Most of the people that I've done this exercise with here in the studio, they all start too loud and their accents gradually get them louder and louder as they course through this exercise. So keep, keep your volume reasonable and then your accents will be more apparent. I think that's one of the trickiest things here is to make sure that the accents really sound different from the rest of the phrase. All right, let's go to the hard part. Ready? We're entering into the more difficult phase of the caterpillar and in this phase, we are going to be changing the resolution at which we are accenting, meaning we're going to be accenting downstrokes and upstrokes. This is a little tricky, so we're gonna go nice and slow. Keep it slow, keep it quiet. So we're going to accent the one, the downstroke, one. And we're coming around again to the second measure. We're going to accent the and of the one. So one and two. And then on the third measure, we'll be accenting the second string, the downstroke. And on the fourth, we'll be accenting the and of the two. It sounds confusing, um, and it might be, but it won't once you do it a few times. Again, tablature is available over on Patreon. It's a lot easier to see this. Let's just try, use your ears. We're gonna try to do this together nice and slow. Here we go. One, two, three, four. go a little faster, I missed one. This is such a difficult control exercise for that striking hand, and you can feel that if you could master something like this, any possible note that you are creating on the banjo could be accented or not. That kind of control could be really useful when you're creating variations, when you're making music. Total control over that striking hand. Let's try to get it, let's do it again a little faster. And this time I want to repeat it, so we're going to play it back to back. One, two, three, four. So keep your tempo slow, especially on that second version of the Caterpillar. Make sure that the sounds are nice. You heard me struggle a couple times there. I'm leaving in those mistakes because I want you to see how difficult this exercise is. It's very hard to keep things in your head, knowing what you're doing, but it's also really hard to make those upstrokes sound sweet and nice. That's something I'm gonna be working on. Until I see you next time on Banjo. Quest.